Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Today we would like to present about the Ibn Khaldun concept of civilization Ibn Shazwani binti Muhammad Sudin and I will present about the Ibn Khaldun biography and his personal life Okay, um, Ibn Khaldun is also known as Al Alamah Wali Ad Din Abu Zaid Abdul Rahman Ibn Muhammad Ibn Khaldun. He was born in 1332 in Tunis and he was died in 1406 in Cairo, Egypt. He also was a famous historian and Muslim thinker of the 14th century. Uh, hence, Ibn Khaldun is well known as the founder of sociology uh, of knowledge or knowledge of al umran civilization as termed by him in his Muqaddimah. Uh, Ibn Khaldun also was a historian who developed the theory of Asobia and the concept of al umran to explain the rise and decline of nation and empires. Um, Ibn Khaldun also believed that the theory of Asabia play, uh, play an enormous role in the development of human civilization. Next, I want to share a story about his personal life. Ibn Khaldun is regarded to be one of the brightest and most brilliant minds of Muslim world. His family had status in society and enabled uh, Ibn Khaldun to study with the best teacher in the region. Ibn Khaldun also um, enjoyed an excellent education in his youth, but his parents died when the Black Death uh, struck Tunis in 1349. In the age of 20, he was given a post at the court of Tunis and later became a secretary to the Sultan of Morocco in Fez. In the late 1350s, he was imprisoned for two years for suspicion of participating in a rebellion. After being released uh, and promoted by a new ruler, he again fell out of favor and went to Granada. Uh, Ibn Khaldun has served the Muslim ruler of Granada in face and Granada's Prime Minister Ibn al Khatib. Um, in 1375, Ibn Khaldun sought refuge from the tumultuous political sphere with the trip of Aulai Arif. After that, they lodged him and his family in a castle in Algeria where he spent four years writing the Muqaddimah. The Muqaddimah is the uh, superior work, is not merely a history of the Arabs and Berbers. It is also a discussion of historical method and the development of a philosophy of history, except for one incident in which he was forced to participate in a place revolt. His life there was uh, relatively peaceful until Timur invaded Syria. Farash, Sultan of Egypt, uh, went out to meet Timur and his victorious forces and Ibn Khaldun was among the notable he took with him. Um, when the Mamluk army returned to Egypt, they left Ibn Khaldun in a uh, besiege Damascus. Ibn Khaldun spent nearly two months in the company of Timur who treated him with respect. On his way back home, Sultan of Rome carrying an ambassador to the Sultan of Egypt, took him to Gaza where he established contact with the rising Ottoman Empire. Um, at the end, the rest of Ibn Khaldun life was relatively uneventful. Uh, he died in 1406 in Cairo, Egypt. That's all from me. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Afifa binti Jasri and my metric number is 1728432. And now I will proceed with Ibn Khaldun's contribution. In his contribution, I would like to mention about these two kitabs which are about 
muqaddimah and kitab al-ibar uh, muqaddimah is also known as uh, introduction uh, Ibn Khaldun uh, write, wrote this in a span of 5 months so in this kitab he discuss about the variety of topics uh, about every knowledge every idea of knowledge during his day uh, such as like history sociology astrology and he also would discuss about chemistry alchemy and magic in a scientific way so uh, in his in this kitab he also mentioned about the historical claims uh, with a calculated logic um, and he discussed the current sciences uh, during his days. Um, in this kitab also, he mentioned about his theory uh, about Asabiyah, which is uh, group feeling and the role that it plays in Bedouin societies in insightful. Um, Muqaddima or uh, introduction is the greatest uh, legacy that Ibn Khaldun has left um for all the humanity and the generation nowadays so for the second kitabs uh, it is about uh, kitab al ibar uh, al uh, ibn khaldun <coughs> uh, mentioned that he himself was involved in politics and government for quite significant period of time therefore he was able to write uh, and carefully scrutinize the theory of good governance in depth in his writing. So I think that's all from me. Uh, now we will proceed with uh, our next members. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Zatul Islam, Media Baru Isham, and I will continue with Ibn Khaldun concept of civilization. First of all, uh, meaning of civil civilization. From Merriam Webster, uh, the meaning of civilization is relatively a uh, high level of cultural and technological development, speci specifically the stage of cultural development at which writing and the keeping of writing records is attained. Second, the cultural characteristic of a particular time or place, the impact of European, European civilization on the lands and uh, that they colonize. Okay, so in civilization, Ibn Khaldun mentioned Asabia is uh, as the organizing principle of society, and Ibn Khaldun defines civilization as a corporate social actor turning it into an individual discipline, and studied the behavior and uh, reactions of civilization under different circumstances. And Ibn Khaldun also provide us with a perspective that reflect the open civilization concept which aim to put all civilization under uh, its protection. He is also defined civil uh, the concept of civilization. Uh, human social organization is something necessary. And the philosopher expressed this fact, this fact by saying, man is uh, political by nature. Uh, that is, he cannot do without the social organization, for which the philosopher used the technical term of town, and that is about civilization. So let's move on uh, on the next topic, Ibn Khaldun's cyclical theory and also uh, about Asabia. Asabia is a or social cohesion which is at the core of social organization. And Asabia uh, is a bind group together through a common language, culture, and behavior. Uh, it is also traditional societies process but broken down in urbanist society. And certain civilized societies based in cities with develop of social organization, arts, and craft. So he created the science of Albuk Ibn Khaldun created the science of civilization, society or culture in order to analyze human uh, analyze history of human being. So history of a cyclical process in which a uh, sovereign powers come to existence, get stronger, lose power and uh, collapse by another power. 
uh, the main uh, item which control all the process um, in the condition is Asobia. The, uh, Asobia is a, a primitive people which uh, are the origin of the society and have a strong uh, Asobia. Um, this society also uncivilized and just struggle for immediate needs. So in order to defend uh, themselves um, from danger coming from environment, animal or other human, they have to improve themselves as strong uh, warrior or they need to learn to survive even in the hardest condition. So also, uh, they have a strong relations with a relative and close friend. The reason is that human uh, is a social uh, animal and to survive they need uh, they also need other people and these uh, relations are poor and their blood type blood type tie is the strongest part of the social cohesion so when people develop uh, people will start civilizing and losing these features which they have uh, in the primitive life Okay, so, uh, sovereign powers have about 120 life years span, which take about 3 or 4 generations. The reason that is, uh, that is over time, uh, gener generations change and when the time pass, uh, the coming generations forget about the previous generation gradually. And uh, the fundamental... Uh, Principle and values of sovereign power are established by the first generation. The second generation just follow the former, and the third generation forget all the values of their ancestor. And the fourth generation will cause the sovereign powers to collapse. But the sovereign powers may continue to live more uh, if the reason which destroy the state do not take place in 122 years life span. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Afifa binti Jasri and I will be presenting about Ibn Khaldun's good governance in achieving civilization. So Ibn Khaldun believed that good governance is a part and parcel of every civilization. Uh, civilization uh, requires a set of rules and regulations to ensure a harmonious and orderly society. In history of good governance, Ibn Khaldun had suggested the importance of Asobia. Uh, which denotes group solidarity and sense of belonging. In this regard, Ibn Khaldun uh, affirmed that strong asobia indicates good character and high qualifications of leadership. Asobia also is essential in the development of civilized life and in creating a structured system of government. Asobia helps creating the existence of leaders and people under their leadership. Asobia uh, is strong in the nomadic phase of human uh, civilization and decreases as civilization advances. Uh, the final goal of solidarity uh, or Asobia according to Ibn Khaldun is sovereignty. In history of good governance, Ibn Khaldun had also listed uh, three types of ruling government model which consists of uh, first, Siasa Tarbiya. Uh, which is a government based on natural rule, uh, refers to a ruling government that governs the country with his own desires, wills and lusts. Uh, secondly, is Siasa Akliya, which is government based on reasons. It refers to um, a government that is based on rational and man-made laws. And lastly, is Siasa Dinia, which is government based on religion, where laws are derived from religious teachings. Uh, good governance uh, is further believed to be fra free from corruption and social injustice. I think that's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Nur Diana Najiha binti Muhammad Liza Khan. Uh, I will continue our presentation with the importance of Ibn Khaldun teachings in the present time, which is uh, nowadays. So the first important is uh, 
the philosophy or the teachings of Ibn Khaldun helps people to gain more knowledge and to improve their lifestyle. Uh, opening the minds with high level education would lead to civilized societies and increase a better opportunities for the living. And the second uh, important is which is focused to education. Nowadays, a student who specialize in a specific sciences efficiently will be ready to learn uh, another level of sciences easily. This is because uh, Ibn Khaldun already divided uh, knowledge into its section uh, specifically. Example of the knowledge that Ibn Khaldun ha had divide, has divided, um, which is uh, sociology, metaphysics, uh, logics, and others. Okay, uh, move on to the next slide, which is the importance of philosophy in general. So the first one is, philosophy is a foundation of a critical thinking. Philosophy brings out a question and then it will make us to find out the answer uh, by ourselves for the question. It encourages us to think critically about the world and it is the foundation of all knowledge. And when we utilize it properly, it can provide us with huge benefit. And then... The second one, the importance of, of philosophy is because uh, sciences cannot answer every question. Generally, uh, sciences really help us to live better until nowadays. But just like every other field, sciences uh, has its own limit. Uh, because we cannot derive everything by experiment or experience so uh, for example uh, sciences cannot determine human values so philosophy uh, is a striving towards figuring out what it means to live a meaningful life and in short sciences uh, really help us live longer until nowadays but Philosophy is the things that help us live better. Uh, okay, so move on to the last slide, which is uh, our views and our opinions about Ibn Khaldun. So the first one is related to the modern social sciences. Ibn Khaldun is the first beginning of sciences. That is why we think and agree that he is a golden bridge of, uh, for the development of sciences and the, and the history of modern soci sociology. And the second one is uh, Ibn Khaldun's book which is named Muqaddimah is not only about magnificent histo historiography but it is also covered a knowledge and a theories as so many theories about comprehensive political and the third one is which is the last one uh, we think that his theories uh, Ibn Khaldun theories are valid and acceptable in explaining the, the current event this is because each theory and each uh, Ibn Khaldun philosophy reflects according to social changes until nowadays. And that's all from us. Uh, thank you.